Help it. From games that'll make your heart race to lighthearted adventures for the easily spooked, we count 15 of the best games to play on Halloween. Number 15. Luigi's Mansion 1 and 2. These games aren't really scary, and I don't think they're supposed to be scary, but if you're all about the Halloween festivities and not crapping your pants because of a jump scare, this is a great game to play. The puzzles are well thought out, and the combat evolves so you don't get bored of it as you make progress. The general theme is that Luigi's looking for someone and has to go through a haunted mansion to find them. And for a change, one of the Mario Brothers actually has a personality, which is one of the many extra details that make the game more enjoyable. Number 14. Five Nights at Freddy's. Speaking of crapping your pants because of a jump scare, this game is the epitome of that design philosophy. With tight camera controls and a counterintuitive door system, the game is out to make you piss your pants. Not only that, but there's a surprisingly deep amount of lore if you dig around enough. So much that it's caused a tremendous amount of discussion on the internet, with people swapping headcanon with one another. The game makes good use of 3D pre-rendered graphics, which is a good change of pace from all the retro games out there right now. It's also available on smartphones, making it pretty easy for just about anyone to play. Number 13. Dead Space. While it's listed as a survival horror game, it's really more of an action horror game unless you play it on the highest difficulty and you're really bad at aiming your weapons. For the most part, it's a shooting gallery, but the enemies do have some pretty gruesome finishing moves, which adds to the horror factor. With that said, the game is still really fun. It has an interesting universe, and the story is surprisingly engaging while also being a little bit cliche, but what else can you expect from horror? The horror aspects really shine in the enemy designs, which look gruesome and appropriately alien while also drawing from the familiar territory of zombies just enough so you feel like you're treading new ground while also knowing what you're in for. Number 12. Don't Starve is a survival game through and through. Although it's not explicitly horror, it has a creepy atmosphere and a sanity meter making it more than worthy of being played on Halloween. It also has multiplayer, so if you want to spend some time with a friend or a loved one while surviving a harsh and creepy environment, this game's perfect. Just be aware that Don't Starve will kick you when you're down over and over again with the permadeath mechanic and this can lead to a lot of frustration if you're not prepared. Number 11. Siren Blood Curse if you like Asian-style horror, then this game's for you. With some obvious inspirations from The Ring, The Grudge, and various other not-so-famous Eastern horror movies, Siren won't disappoint the avid fan. You're supposed to avoid the enemies in this game, and to aid you, the main character has the ability to simultaneously see through the eyes of the main character as well as other characters and sometimes the enemies. While this is the third installment in the Siren series, it's actually a reimagining of the first game, so you don't need to feel bad about missing out on the story. Number 10. SCP Containment Breach if by some strange coincidence you happen to love creepy pastas but haven't played this game yet, then you're in for a treat. The SCP Wiki is the basis of this game, and the developers created an amazing homage with this fan project. The main mechanic of this game is the blink mechanic, which plays a big part with one particular monster, SCP-173, who moves when you're not looking at it. In addition to that, there's also a monster that will attack you if you see its face. The main character is a test subject that chose to work with SCP rather than face a death penalty or life in jail. However, the SCP facilities have been compromised, and it's your job to figure out what happened. Number 9. F-E-A-R, First Encounter Assault Recon, or FEAR. F-E-A-R is meant to be a horror game, but it's honestly not that scary if you're a big horror fanatic. However, that doesn't mean it's not worth playing. The gunplay and the enemy AI are both really well designed and executed. There are ghost possessed soldiers, and the main character has a mysterious past, so I guess not calling it a horror game is a bit unfair, but in the end, I feel the focus is really on the excellent gameplay. The main character has the ability to slow down time, but it tends to make the game a little bit easy once you get good enough at it, so if you're looking for a challenge, I advise to not even use a bullet time at all. Number 8. The Evil Within This game isn't without flaws, but they're mostly outshined by the fun gameplay and above average atmosphere. But if you're looking for a well-written story, you should probably look elsewhere. It's a pretty standard plot. The main character is Mr. Normal Cop, or is he? And shit's gone fucked. But it's easy to forget about these problems when you're running for your life from a monstrosity with a burlap sack and chains. Also, if you're into collect-a-thons, there's a lot of replayability thanks to the collectibles and hidden secrets found throughout each level. Number 7. Outlast Horror gaming is really at its best when your first reaction to seeing a creepy enemy isn't to load it full of bullets, but to run and hide instead. Which basically is the theme of Outlast. The main inspiration for Outlast is pretty clearly the found footage genre. But don't let its inspiration let you think that the game is full of monsters and a story that you've already seen. The game has a lot of interesting aspects that are mostly unique to itself. The asylum is often very dark, and the only way the main character can see what's going on is by using the night vision mode on his camera. Which runs out of batteries unrealistically fast, but if you can suspend your disbelief, it's an interesting mechanic that adds a lot to the game. Number 6. Amnesia The Dark Descent 
Amnesia is another game to where you can't hurt your enemies, instead you're forced to run and hide from what may or may not be your imagination as a protagonist loses sanity when he's in the dark for too long. Unlike Outlast, the focus of the gameplay isn't running away from your enemies, it's more focused on adventure game-like puzzles and interacting with your environment creatively. The only real problem with Amnesia is that the pacing can feel a little jolty after you just finished running for your life only to be forced to think your way through a puzzle for the next 30 minutes with little to no danger of seeing any enemies. Number 5 Fatal Frame 2 the Crimson Butterfly. The Fatal Frame R Project Zero series is uniquely Japanese, with ghosts that wouldn't look out of place in the ring and the main weapon against the ghost being a camera. Even though including combat tends to lessen the impact of the horror, this game makes fighting back something you'd really rather not do unless absolutely necessary. There's also a bunch of puzzles to solve and the story's told in a subtle way that really suits the atmosphere. If you haven't tried this series before, you owe it to yourself to give the Crimson Butterfly a try. Number 4 Resident Evil Remake or Resident Evil 4 Sure, the latest games in the series have about as much horror in them as an episode of Goosebumps, but Remake and 4 are still amazing games. Choosing between Remake and 4 is really a choice in what you like the least. If you hate playing a game with awkward controls, then you should go for 4. Whereas if the two words escort mission make you grit your teeth, you should probably go play Remake. But really, even if you're not a fan of clunky controls, you should still give Remake a try. The difficult controls are there on purpose to make stressful and creepy stimuli have an extra impact on how you play. Or to put it in simple terms, it's hard to shoot because it makes it scary. Number 3 Alien Isolation Most players after playing a game for a while will have every enemy's attack and patrol patterns burnt into their memories. Alien Isolation fixes this by giving the alien a whole lot of different commands that make it nearly impossible to memorize everything. Additionally, it follows a well-crafted dynamic AI system that keeps the game fresh and genuinely horrifying from beginning to end. Not only that, but Isolation also has VR support, making the game at least 10 times scarier than normal. If you want an incredibly scary experience, then Alien Isolation with an Oculus Rift simply can't be beat. Number 2 Silent Hill 2 the most important and effective way a game can make you uncomfortable creeped out and edgy is to have good atmospheric design. And Silent Hill 2 is the king of atmosphere. Despite its old age, Silent Hill 2 is still one of the most atmospheric games ever made. But that's not all that makes this game so good. The story is amazing, the combat is wonky in all the right ways, and the creative enemies and puzzles make it an experience that every gamer should go through. The only real downside is that the voice acting really is cringeworthy, but if you can look past that flaw, it's a masterpiece of horror. Number 1 Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem New experiences aren't easy to come by in gaming. Remakes, remasters, and sequels are the bread and butter of the industry. If you're as sick of this as I am, you need to play Sanity's Requiem. This game has one of the best sanity systems in gaming. It's not designed to mess with the main character like most of them, but instead to mess with the player in a very self-aware fashion. The plot is intriguing and the environments are varied, with the player traveling into the past controlling different characters in different time periods. If you haven't played this game yet, you should definitely give it a try. It's a prime Halloween choice and a very memorable experience. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.